Welcome back. Uh, today, um, I just finished watching uh, Chess State, the entire movie. Um, it's about chess in uh, the state of Illinois and how that developed and includes um, such luminaries as uh, Arpad Elo. So if you get a chance, uh, go check that out. Um, just search for Chess State. Um, that's not why we're here today. Um, in such watching, it occurred to me to go back through my archive and see could I find um, some of the games I had played during uh, the chess championship um, during my senior year in high school? And uh, the answer is so far I haven't found that, but nevertheless, we have some content today. I found a game, uh, round three of the U.S. Amateur Team North um, team tournament event. I believe it's a four-player team, five-round event. Uh, time control, I think, is the standard V-Day time control. Um, I think it's like 40 and 90 and then uh, the rest in an hour. Or, I don't exactly recall, but this is a three-day event. There certainly was plenty of time to think for most of it. Um, however, I did get in time trouble anyway, so that was pretty exciting. Um, so I guess without further ado, um, you're probably familiar at least with my opponent, uh, a regular streamer on Lee Chess. This was back in 2011, so this predated uh, the popularity of Lee Chess. And that's okay. Um, so I was playing the white pieces. Uh, I forget, uh, I believe I was playing board one of my team and that's how I got paired with Eric. Um, so, uh, I'm trying to remember, there's some famous uh, pithy saying about the mistakes are all there waiting to be played or something. Um, and that's kind of, well, we'll see how this goes. I think this, I forget if we were playing in the two-day or three-day uh, format, by, but by round three here, both of us were super tired. So, um, that makes this a pretty interesting game. Um, so back in 2011, my main weapon had been the English. I spent quite a bit of time studying that, uh, so that's what I decided to play this game, is just stick with what I know, or what I best know at that time anyway. Um, so believe it or not, your opening preferences can change over time. Uh, so here we are playing a pretty normal English. Um, most opponents I've seen don't actually play knight c6 here, so uh, this is a reverse Sicilian, but this is actually pretty popular. It's just that in games that I've played, I don't have as much experience against this move as against other moves which are, I don't know, more in line with how you would normally play a king pawn opening. This is more akin to a Vienna, and this is perfectly good. Uh, this is more than good. Uh, but this leaves open this fun possibility, which uh, Eric chose to play. So, okay, we're going to have ourselves a really fun game here. Um, so, let's see. Here, I just, or I continue with uh, my opening prep, e3, d5, uh, takes, knight b4. Uh, so this is threatening uh, the d3 square. I think both d3 and d4 are playable here, or at least at the time I believed that. Um, so I elected to play d3. Uh, Eric played knight f takes. Uh, I played takes, takes, and uh, I developed my knight over to f3 here. So um, here this is me playing what I was then familiar with. Uh, this might not be accurate theory today, or it might not even be accurate back in 2011, but um, it's something I played before and felt comfortable enough with. So that's where I went, what I went with. Here, Bishop D6 is uh, surprisingly accurate. 
I had expected him to play something else, like uh, this check, even though this doesn't really achieve much. Um, yeah, you can get white to liquidate some material here. We can choose... Um, I'm not even sure. Uh, so, like, I'm playing a reversed French, essentially, so trading these dark squared bishops um, would not be so bad for me. And it wouldn't be hard for me to get d4 in either. At least I don't think it would be. Um, so, I expected bishop b4 check. That didn't happen. Alternatively, um, in similar positions with colors reversed, I've played things like bishop e6 here. Well, I'm sorry, bishop e6 uh, just hangs the e-pawn. So, um, normally this e-pawn's already attended to. Um, I guess this is flexible, but there's this one tricky little thing that's going on that he's going to have to remember about. Um, and if he forgets about it, crazy things can happen. So I'm like, okay, great. So I'm playing a reversed French-ish sort of thing. Um, just because I have chosen not to play d4, I've actually conceded the center um, in exchange for getting something. I guess reverse wrench isn't quite it. This is more like a Skavenengen, or I don't know. I don't know openings particularly well. Um, and as much as I'd studied the English, I'd studied all these offbeat lines and never really got to this main theoretical stuff. So... Uh, I just haven't had the depth of study that my opponent had. Um, I believe what's kind of normal here is bishop d2 and c3 and such. Um, uh, that's not what I did. Um, I played a3. And so this seeks to deny the knight the b4 square so that the d3 pawn cannot fall. Um, so that's what that's about. Uh, he decides to protect his knight and expand on the queen side and give his queen some squares to go to and blunt my bishop all at the same time, which is all very good. So I see, like, I have a head of a pawn chain. I can't really attack the base of the pawn chain, but I can still take some space out here. So uh, this is, again, very... <laughs> this is annoyingly accurate here. Um, so... I'm basically on the verge of gambiting the b-pawn. Um, but I don't think it's hanging just yet on account of uh, this. So he also has issues to attend to. He doesn't have time to chomp on b4 just yet. It's pretty sharp. Um, but I'm still hanging in there. Still finding complications. I'm surviving the opening. Which is more than I could say for most of my tournament games. Usually by this point, um, 12 moves in or such, I've got a disadvantage. Here I've got so much activity, it kind of makes up for the fact that I'm almost losing a pawn. Uh, I don't want to play b5 because queen b6 would just pin my pawn. I can't take on c6 and that would drop the bishop. So b5 wouldn't really achieve anything here. Um, so my opponent just continues development and deals with the problem on the e5 square. So I've had enough of this tricky b4 tactic stuff, so we both decide to castle. And now I decide that I'm going to undermine his knight if I can. And get all kinds of fun little tactics going on. Um, and he says no. <laughs> So, so much for, like, if I can get some chaos happening on the board, maybe in a tactical blowout, something positive could happen for me. Um, this is hugely problematic, perhaps. I forget what the actual evaluation of this is, but it looks terrible to me. Um, because uh, there are numerous problems to deal with here. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's a way for black to emerge out of this without losing heavy material. Um, and if I back up one, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hit the nut. Or I can't hit the queen with a4. Yeah, there's no time for that. Because d5 is hanging. But now with this, if he hits the queen with a4, I take on uh, e6. He takes b3. I take. He takes. I take on b7. Yeah, that's no good. So I think this is. Uh, King h8 just brings some sanity to the madness. Um, but I'm like, hey, I can develop <laughs> and exploit this pin. So I'm just, like, finding tactic after tactic here, finding so many ways to justify my crazy opening maneuvers, um, which seem to uh, evade punishment. And there's probably some tactical hammer somewhere that black can find, but I haven't found it yet. So, um, the worst thing about my position is that I have this weakness on d3, which eventually is going to have to push to d4 before the endgame happens, because pushing it in the endgame would result in a terrible position. Um, so, let's see. Uh, what do I do next? So I decide to um, put my rook on the half-open file. Uh, Eric does the same. Um, and here, I'm gambiting on the fact that I'm eventually going to push d4. So uh, if there is an exchange on d4, the e file will become open. So in that event, I want my rook on the e file. So uh, yeah, the idea here is d4. Not necessarily immediately, but at some point. Um, so yeah, I am playing actively. And so he steps out of this pin. Um, note that this a5 pawn is a little bit loose. It's not so easy to take advantage of because the minute I attack it, he just plays b6 or queen a7 to defend it. But um, it gives me a tempo. And he's making another queen move. On the other hand, it does threaten to take on b5 and gain a tempo, assuming that I want to keep my queen on this square, which I really don't. And the other fun thing about this is, like, so he's retreated his bishop back, or his queen back to um, b8. I am getting closer to doing one of these things. So we're building up, <laughs> I don't know, uh, pressure on the center from a distance. And ranged pieces do operate effectively at a distance. Um, so let's see here. He played rook c to e8. Um, I the I guess the best explanation I come up with is like this is a great defensive move, and we're both tired, and um, I'm just surprised at this point that e being uh, outrating me by over 200 points um actually what's the difference here 2288 minus 1971 um that's 317 points uh so i'm a little bit outrated here um so i was just stunned that like i got to almost move 20 and I'm actually not worse here. Um, or if I am worse, it's not in a middle game. It's in an end game where this uh, pawn structure will eventually uh, eat me alive. But for now, like I've got this really solid kingside position. His rooks are threatening to push all sorts of stuff on my kingside. But, um, well, we'll see where things end up. So... I decide, like, this is a good square for my queen. Um, note that this d3 pawn, which I keep saying is going to be the weakness eventually, uh, there's nothing that can attack it right now. Um, so, on the flip side, though, uh, it kind of looks like I'm, well, tactically speaking, uh, this pawn cannot be taken because I still have pressure over here. Um, so, uh, I was willing to trade into a drawn endgame, 
And I'm sure that for high-rated players, it's frustrating playing against an opponent who is more than content with a draw. Um, it really challenges the opponent, uh, especially if they have the black pieces, to push a lot harder. Um, so uh, here he decides to reinforce everything. Um, note that like rook f7 would just run into knight g5, so this might just be about uh, defending the seventh rank and giving me a tempo and asking me, Dan, what are you doing here? Um, so, uh, by this point, uh, two things became kind of clear. One, I'm not going to go suddenly mate Eric on the king side. And two, um, Eric's not going to suddenly mate me over here either. Um, my king side is kind of holding up and I've got plenty of pressure on the center. And, uh, if I can keep applying more and more pressure, uh, maybe I can break through on the center or queen side before uh, this pawn storm comes rolling in. And he wouldn't dare push this pawn storm just yet. So uh, I back up. This exposes my bishop here um, and uh, allows me to really consider do I want to push e4 and d4 all in one go. Um, so uh, Eric sees like he's going to bring some pressure over on the king side. Uh, and I'm like, well, that's great. Uh, it's been a good game so far. We've made it 20 moves without losing. Let's see how many more we can make it. <laughs> um, yeah, I push, and my intent is to play... Well, I forget exactly if I had an intent here. There's a lot of things I can consider depending on what my opponent does. Um, it is worth noting this hammers, or this forces this e5 pawn to stay in place. Um, and further, uh, so that blockades his bishop. Um, but further, I might be able to push d4 and really break things open. I have this opportunity to move my knight to c4 and hit this and hit all sorts of fun stuff. And, um, I'm not sure that at this point I was calculating, other than um, making sure there wasn't some immediate destruction of my position. So this seemed like an incredibly complex move that I, I didn't fully grasp, but I felt like if I didn't push something here, um, my position is eventually going to get mowed over by my opponent's activity, and I didn't really see a target. I mean, maybe I could push... Uh, maybe I could take on c6 or push a4 or I don't know. And this queen on a1 is looking pretty suspect. So I want to get some activity as soon as possible. Not sure if activating my pieces quickly is going to involve an f4 push or not. I was just so overwhelmed and I didn't have an unlimited amount of time to play this game. So I just went with my emotions here. Um, so we have this nice exchange um, on e4. Um, at this point, uh, who knows what's going on. So, I mean, Stockfish has an opinion, I'm sure. But um, let me see if I can turn down the speaker just a touch. So you guys have been hicking, hearing the move clicking noises. I haven't, but now I can hear them. And you're going to hear a bit of an echo. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, this is the obvious immediate threat. Um, so I'm still holding the e5 pawn in position here. Um, there's Eventually this can be considered, this can be considered. This is up in the air. Um, and potentially a lot more things can happen if this bishop moves. Uh, so... Let's see, what did he end up eventually picking here? Um, yeah, he retreated his bishop all the way back to uh, his home rank. So maybe I'm even slightly better here, but my pawn structure is terrible. My activity is interesting. Um, 
like my activity as compared to this is it seems like i'm doing slightly better here but um that could vaporize at any time or evaporate at any time um so i'm starting to think about this again now um what is it that white should really be doing here so this isn't just a matter of me showing off the game. I should actually start to heavily analyze what's going on. Um, and this bishop can always move to a7 and threaten f2, so thank goodness the knight protects f2, but that can change if he plays knight f6 to undermine my knight. Uh, I was excited at this point, but... Um, yeah, I'm not actually threatening very much. I'm threatening to threaten things, which was kind of my MO for most of my tournament career so far. Um, just pretend to be threatening things, and your opponents will find ideas, and they won't always be right, and then you'll actually find a threat somewhere. And that's not a sound way to play, and professionals don't play that way most of the time. Um, so... Uh, this was an amateur tournament. We were both amateurs. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, he's got a 2200 rating. Um, so, uh, I guess by U.S. standards, that's National Master, uh, Rosen, isn't it? Wow. How did that not occur to me until now? I don't know. Maybe at the time I was aware of it, but I certainly, um did look up on the wall chart and saw he was a very strong player. Um, yes, yeah, so I do want to analyze, like, what can white do? Instead of just talking in vague generalities. So, I guess one possibility, this was the first thing that occurred to me, is that I could hit the bishop, and the bishop would just move to f5, and that's, uh, I would end up taking b7, they would take on b5. Uh, I mean, I guess I could move the pieces. Let me put down the actual move first, and then we'll go into variations. Oh, is that the actual move? No. The actual move is d4. But alternatives, I guess, would be knight c5. Um, uh, can I seriously say f4 is a cons an alternative here? Maybe? I'm not sure. That's pretty dicey. Um, just feels like my position's crumbling if I do that, but let's put it out there as, as a candidate. Um, b takes c is always an idea. I never wanted his bishop to end up on c6, so I kept postponing or not doing that. Um, but, um, yeah, this bishop on c6 would have just torn my king side to pieces, because then exchanges for the knight, and then the knight can't defend f2 anymore, and then I have to scramble to find a defensive f2 to make sure there aren't other things going on. Oh, congrats. Yeah. It's always good to achieve new things. Um, well, I don't know. It's usually good to achieve things. Um, it's always good to have goals in mind. I'm not sure that rating goals... Uh, well, at some point they are useful for science. But uh, in terms of personal achievement, it's not as fulfilling to just get the number. Uh, as it is to have adventures with friends and learn things and enjoy the game. <laughs> but yeah, uh, congrats. Uh, are there other candidates? I don't know. Both of us were pretty tired at the time of this game. I said that already, but I really mean it. Um... Could h4 be considered? That looks insane. h5 is never happening, so there's no point in playing h4 here. Um, are there other other candidates? 
Uh, Queen B1 occurred to me during the game. I don't know. It's messy. It's a move. Queen A2 gets hit by Bishop E6. A4 takes, takes, Bishop takes. It's, that looks painful. Oh, wait. Oh, maybe this is a thing. Maybe. Because if takes, 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 I have this. So he wouldn't go this far. Um, so takes, and then probably B6. And maybe I have something here. I don't know. Chess is hard. Did you know that? Um, so if all this transpired, like this is still an idea. I still get one free tempo. And that's just like the story of this game. It's just one free tempo every single turn. I'm always menacing something. Um, and if, as long as I can keep active, uh, I won't get overrun. But the minute I let up, it's all over. Um, so yeah, this... Uh, I don't really see a way to continue for white here. This one threat is not enough. Like, the idea of bringing this knight back even to a4 to hit that just runs into knight takes, among other things. Um... Oh, well, I'm sorry. There's this thing. That's annoying. Um, this, yeah. This is like the game of one tempo. Everything can happen <laughs> in the blink of an eye here. And neither of us has anywhere near enough time to calculate all the complexities of this position. Um, so we'll just label this variation unclear and move on. Um, b takes c6 I think would have encountered bishop takes am I seeing any reason not to do bishop takes here no yes yeah, so that looks unfavorable f4 so my fear here was bishop check which doesn't have to immediately be played uh, it's always in the cards uh, he could take first on f4, I think. Like, if this worked, um, if this idea by me that I just come up with out of nowhere ends up working against a 2200, uh, something's not right. Somebody's been, um, a little more tired than usual. Because, like, this seems like a pretty fundamental idea. There might be some really tricky maneuver here somewhere to make it work somehow, but um, I would not assume that this works. Um, I would need it proven to me before I would believe it. So, is there, like, I could take g7, rook takes, this is kind of scared, well, Rook takes is forced, and then I have this discovery against the queen. Uh, but then the queen goes anywhere, and I have nothing. So, unless we can find a move ordering trick here somewhere, like, I'm considering knight d6. I don't remember how much of this I saw during the game, but... Um, so the point of this, I don't know. He's got to continue defending his rook. That's one idea. He could, if he takes on here first, uh, check, and then goes over this way. Um, gosh, I don't know what's going on. Everything is hanging. He still has bishop a7 whenever he wants it. And it just gets more and more powerful. Um, so... Unless I've got more tricks up my sleeve, this variation's over. Do I have more tricks? Um, maybe. So, I still have a tempo here. First of all, I don't think this is the best variation, so why are we looking at it? Um, well, 
I guess the reason I'm looking at it. Let me. Can I promote this up one? Okay. So sub variation uh, queen d8. I think this gains another tempo. Um, so I don't think this is actually. Yeah, this seems to refute queen d8 outright. So. Um, I mean, there is this check. I can block the check, and he can hit this. But then I take there, and all the fun comes to an end. So this doesn't quite work out. So I think uh, rook takes rook takes queen g6 is how this goes. Um, I still have like one tempo before my position caves in. So I could take on c6 and accelerate my demise. I could take on b7 and confuse matters. Um, yeah, I think taking on b7 is the only play here. Uh, and this seems to maximize black's flexibility. Um, oh wait, this runs into, I just take that. But then he takes, I take, and he pins me, but then I break the pin. Yeah, so I actually survived that. Uh, so bishop a7 is not necessarily best. Um... Yeah, my, the first candidate move that came to mind anyway is pawn takes pawn. Um, huh. Interesting. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, yeah, no, this just ends the game. Uh, this fork down here. So... And why is this so decisive? Well... If he pins this, or if I pin that, um, I thought there was some reason this didn't work. Why during the game did I think this was no good? Um, well, I didn't see bishop takes g3. I'm not that smart. Um, it might not work. Yeah, no, bishop g3 looks dubious. Um, knight e3 looks scary, but... Oh, wait, does that win a piece? No, because this fork... Um, like, there's no counter shot here, right? Black has to capture. Um... Wait, do I take on f3 immediately, or do I snap g7 and sack some material? I can't afford to sack anything here. So, um, now does taking on g3 work? I don't know. There's no way either of us calculated everything here. There's just too much to calculate. Um... So this is good enough for a draw, unless I can take on g7 to somehow make sure that, like, uh, I don't know, because it could, like, king g8 and still have all these really disastrous threats around my king. Um, and again, Stockfish is probably going to say all of this is nonsense, but stuff like this is what I was looking at during the game. Uh, and it's no wonder I get short on time. So you want to, when you're playing a game, uh, maybe this was the last tournament game where I played with this kind of recklessness. I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, to that date, I'd always been playing with a lot of fighting spirit. Um, and coming up with all sorts of tactical mayhem. Um, and I think this game might have will uh woken me a bit to like think about you know maybe playing this ultra ultra sharp thing every single game might not be the most sound thing to do for my tournament career <laughs> hey welcome ah uh, so knight c5 can i refute this somehow i'm not sure Let's hide the chat room for now. Um, so, bishop a7 might be a thing. 
hitting the knight. I think during the game I had this idea that like with the knight pinned um, that this uh, overwhelmed any kind of threat I could muster and then I would have to play something like d4 here. Uh, and I didn't really want to play d4 because I um, because this pawn is even weaker on d4 than it was on d3. And further, it like blocks my bishop, so it would make sense for my opponent to play something like e4 here. Although I can actually take that, so it's complicated. <laughs> oh my god, is this complicated. And if I take, if he takes c5, I can, yeah. So bishop a7 is probably not right. At least this instant, it's probably not right. Um... Oh my goodness, this is complicated. Yeah, what can he do here? I mean, I could turn on Stockfish if I'm really stuck for ideas, but it feels... Like, during the game, I got the sense that even if he had to play Bishop C8, um, this would still be a win for Black. A uh, moral victory in that sense. Um, like, my knight is marooned on the queen side without... Or the only targets it can hit are already taken care of by Black's bishops. So, unless I can keep coming up with new threats here, and maybe I can. Uh, like, this threat finally has to happen, I think. I don't think there's a way of, another way about it. Um, but, uh, during the game, I was concerned that, like, here, my knight gets a discovery and that's it and then my attack ends and his attack begins so um and i again if i play d well d4 i was considering during the game um this is all just variations on variations and probably half of it's wrong uh but it's kind of amazing that i'm even hanging in there at all so this just goes to point out the weakness of this rook on e7. Given another tempo, he would be in a great position, but um, here I might actually get the better of what's going on and might be able to liquidate everything into a drawn endgame. So anyway, yeah, knight c5 I kind of like here. Uh, I wimped out and didn't play it, but that was um, the other move I was seriously considering here. Uh, instead I played d4, and he chops on b5, and we have a completely different game. Um, although I do end up playing knight c5 here, uh, this doesn't look so good. Um, I do get the pawn, but like... Look at where my pawn's at. It's, like, where I don't want to have a pawn. I would very much like to not have a pawn there, so... If I were playing for activity, if I were playing these days, I don't think I would have played into this line that gives black all this activity. I think I would have tried that other crazy uh, knight c5 instead of d4. Maybe I'd get run over, but... It'd be a more interesting game. Instead, here I'm groveling, and that's no fun. Queen g6. So, this reinforces the bishop a7 motif. Um, I can't find any fault with this move. Uh, and that's bad, because I'm in trouble. Because, like, where's my attack now? I've allowed his bishop to emerge on c6, and what do I have? Well, I better come up with something. Um, so I re-centralize my knight, seeing that the only place it could go on the queen side was b7, and that's already covered, so let's go back and find something like d6. They say a knight on the 6th is worth a rook. They might be lying, but uh, they say it, so... Rook f5. Like, what the heck, Eric? 
That's an exciting move if there ever was one. I... I don't know. That's exciting. Um, but... Is that really what Black wants to be playing here? Like, this whole game has been verging on if he gives me a tempo or I give him a tempo, things can really shift in a hurry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is way back in the 2011 days. Um, so, and again, maybe it was fatigue. I don't know, but like, this seems super optimistic. <laughs> like, rooks. That, that is one heck of a rook lift. And if Stockfish likes it, I don't know what I'm doing playing chess. <laughs> it's like, yes, this does target a lot of different things. It threatens the e-pawn. <gasps> Pardon me. Um... And it threatens rook h5, and if I do something stupid, maybe he puts the rook on the g file instead, or maybe he finds a way to hit my f pawn. I don't really know. Um, and the reason I don't know is because here I start attacking. Um, so we're going to have some fun. I said, you know, he can centralize a piece. I'm going to centralize my bishop and do away with all this bishop a7 stuff and further expand the range of my queen, give myself a lot more squares to work with, and maybe even the bishop goes to c5 one day. So, um, a pawn push, this gives his bishop other squares to go to, this gives his knight the c3 square if I end up, like, really doing something stupid and just moving all my pieces away, he could maybe move the knight to c3. I don't really know about this. Um, and I decide, like, I'm not afraid of this either. Um, if I had to, I could defend against this knight d3 invasion other ways, but I don't have to. Um, I guess other ways is strictly limited to rook cd1, isn't it? Um, so... But yeah, there is at least one other way I could deal with this threat. And my queen on a3 is not poorly positioned. Um, this is actually pretty nice. Uh, his pieces aren't set up to accommodate for that. Uh, it did occur to me to like try this. I did not have enough time to analyze this. Um, what was I afraid of here? Is it simply knight d3 I was afraid of? Because that doesn't seem right. Um. <sighs> There's no way that like my king side collapses before his everything collapses, right? He takes there, I take... Um... Threatening mate. No, I'm not, because he's got two pieces covering e8. He takes here, I take there. Um, at what point do we start calling this position unclear and move on? I don't know, but like this looks good for white. So knight takes g2 does not look decisive. Um... So, since that's not decisive, uh, maybe we back up and consider another capture. So he takes, I take, uh, he returns with the fork here. Um, I don't have Rick take c6 anymore. Is knight, knight d6 any good here? This is sharp. <laughs> okay. Is knight f6 any good? Oh my goodness. That looks so great. Uh, what the hell is going on? Uh, 
I can't calculate anymore. My brain is broken looking at this. Um, so this threatens queen f8 mate. Um, takes, takes, I'm threatening f7. This did occur to me during the game. Now keep in mind that we're in the sub variations here. Like this is not what actually got played. I didn't consider knight takes e1 during the game. I only considered this knight takes c1. So we'll promote that. Uh, sorry for all the scrolling. I'm just trying to scroll through the move list and it's bouncing the page around. I don't mean to be doing that. Um, so, yeah, I could have considered this ballsy queen a5 move. Um, what talked me down from this? I'm trying to remember. Was it... I don't know. It might have been fear of the unknown. Which is, like, backing down on that account is seldom my MO. I usually try to make things more complicated. Like, because that's where all the chess excitement is. And getting these crazy positions where you have stories to tell later. Um, so, I think I just was cowardly. I don't think I had any justification for avoiding this. Um, that's disappointing. Wait, was this, no, it wasn't bishop c7 because queen takes b4. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't play this. Maybe I felt this was good enough and that the rest of my pieces were very well positioned and so I didn't need to do something so crazy here. Um, also that the pawn grab seemed kind of ridiculous. But it's not about grabbing the pawn. It's about um, forcing his knight to run away so I can continue attacking. <sighs> anyway, um, we dodge all this nonsense um, because I gave up the tempo. I backed down. And so now we get something that's a little bit calmer, uh, a little bit easier to analyze. I don't understand this move. I'm sorry. I'm during the game. I didn't understand it either. I like you have a tempo. It's fully up to you what you choose to do with that tempo, and this is what you choose to do. Um. I guess the idea is to reroute that to d to d8 and e7 or the king side or something. I really don't know. Because of it's not to support b6 cuz I already have two pieces hitting the b6 square. Um This might have just been a really high class waiting move cuz the bishop on uh, b8 is useless, and at least the hit serves some purpose here. It might stop a future rook c8 check by sacrificing itself on c7. I don't know. Or It's hard to come up with a move for black, because there's just so much going on on this board. Um. <laughs> okay. Well, ain't that exciting. Not every day you get to do this to a 2200. Uh, again, I can only think that like we must have been both super exhausted to have achieved this position at all. Um, knight d5, yeah, that's a move. It gains a tempo. Um, it's... Uh, I take things up a notch. I'm like, hey... You know, before I move my queen, 
let's have some fun here. Uh, I want to know where his queen's going to end up. And if he trades, like taking on e3, I am more than content to get the queens off the board and survive his kingside massacre. Um, but no such luck. Uh, this is interesting. So on my score sheet, I have written queen f2. Which obviously is... Uh, like, I must have missed a move. I do apologize. I apologize. I missed this move way back when. Um, so that's going to affect all these other analyses. Um, so, so you'll have to ignore some of my ranting and raving. Um, F4 was a pretty exciting move, too. Uh, so just pretend I entered the moves correctly. I think most of what I said uh, holds. But I no longer have mate threats, so that's probably why queen a5 um, was not considered or not played. So we're going to delete that sub-variation because uh, it's completely different. Um, I mean, yeah, in that other line where he hadn't played h6, uh, queen a5 might have made some sense. And even so, like, bishop d4 and all this still is sensible to look at in the sub-variation. And we can pull that into the main variation. Uh, let's see, bishop d4, b4, a b4, knight b4, queen a3. Oh, so yeah, we're just following the game again. Uh, rook d7, queen e3, bishop c7. So, uh, yeah, this is still good fun. Uh, bishop h3, knight d5. I take, he takes, and then we play queen f2. Uh, let's delete this. Yeah. All right. Position would have been better omitting f4. Uh, probably. Um, I... It really depends what you mean by better. Um, objectively speaking, uh, I don't think it makes a difference because in both lines, if I'm playing bishop h3 and black's allowing me to win an exchange, um, in both lines I have a winning position. So I don't think f4, h6 makes a big difference. Um, um, Practically speaking, uh, it feels far more comfortable with my pawn still on f2. Um, and practically speaking, with the clock ticking, there could be some problems with my king side being so open, even though I'm up in exchange. Um, because I'm playing against a highly experienced opponent who's had good coaches and played many tournaments, many more than I have. So... Uh, I should be very careful about provoking my opponent by winning this exchange and giving up my kingside defender. <laughs> like, my bishop's gone. Uh, this is definitely me provoking him, like, waving this, uh, red flag in front of him. Uh, or a white flag, or however that goes. Uh, but hey, I played knight c5 with tempo. That was a thing. I just have to survive until... Do we even have an extra time control in this game? I don't remember. Knight b7. Uh, knight d3. Queen e3. So... I don't know... Wait. What in the world is on my score sheet? That makes no sense. Did I seriously miss moves again? Knight c5, rook d8, knight b7, knight d3, queen e3. Oh no, never mind. So yeah, knight e1, uh, rook e1, or queen e1. So maybe I got cocky, I don't know. Maybe I got scared. Like that knight terrified me in the combination with those other pieces. Um, 
but uh, I don't know. I think it's correct to give back the exchange. Um, or at least it's not wrong. So here he takes on d4. So this allows me to take the bishop. Um, let's see. Rook d7. Uh, so yeah, this position's amazing. This position's so good. How could I possibly throw away this position, you ask? Well, about that. Um, again, time pressure definitely a factor. So, uh, rook d1, rook d2, um, wait, this can't possibly be, like, did I miss another move here? No. Is my pawn still on e5? I believe so. I think I wrote down the wrong move on my score sheet. Um, King g1, it must have been... No, queen d5 would make sense. No, queen e4 is what got played. I just had a brain fart. Um, queen d2, queen d2. Rook takes c7. I have a rook? Since when? Um, Rick takes c7, a4. Oh, this must be for a different game? Did I have that annotation? No. What's going on with my score sheet? So I have rook takes c7, a4, knight c5, a3. So it's not knight takes c7. This is going to be hard to salvage. So if, I have to go back a few moves, evidently. Uh, uh, so what actually happened here? Rook d1 check. King g2, rook d2 check, king d g1. And I've got queen d5. So I think I'm missing a move somewhere. Um, maybe I played e6 here. And what could black have possibly played that allows him to play rook d1 check next? Uh, I don't know. So it couldn't have been e6 here then. Um, it wasn't a4 because I have a4 written on the score sheet a bit later. It might have been king g7. Or king h7. e6, I'm guessing. If I have to insert some moves, um, this might have been at what actually transpired, and then maybe I played this here. So then we have this check, king g2, this check, um, king g1, uh, queen d5. Yeah, this is how things went. I take on c7, he pushes a4. Knight c5, a3, knight e6 I have written. You know, at some point, something about my notation doesn't add up. Um, yeah, that that is the Eric Rosen. Yes. Yes, we played a game back in 2011 at the U.S. Amateur Team North event. Um, as I was playing uh, board one of my team and at least in that round. Um, yeah, that's the Rosen. Like this, uh, this is quite a game. Um, I'm missing move 41 on my score sheet. It's some legal move that... 
Um, could it have been H4 or something crazy like that? I can't really think of what it might have been. It wasn't E6 because I'm later playing Knight E6. Uh, so maybe it was this or H3 or I don't know. Uh, let's check, let's check. But then he plays queen d5. So, like, it's definitely not h4. Um, yeah, I, I think it had to have been e6, but I'm struggling with the fact that I've written down knight e6 here. Which, that can't be right. Maybe it's knight e4. That doesn't make much sense. Well, his next move is queen d1 check, so maybe it was knight e4. King f2. And his next move is queen d2 check, so this can't be right either. Um, let's try that. Let's pretend that was it. Sorry. If anybody happened to witness this game and can tell me what my moves were, that would be great. <laughs> um, this doesn't make very much sense, because like, he could have forked on e1 to... No, actually that didn't win the pawn. So maybe this is it. Queen d2, king here, this check, and oh crap. This, this is a nice finesse. Um, I have queen a8 written. Uh, knight takes g7. Knight takes g7. So the pawn's not here. I am so perplexed. So it's not knight d7 either. Let's put this on the board. Um, even though later I have a2 written. So what could he have played in this position that leaves open the possibilities that happened later in the game? Um, like if he plays the queen to the e-file and I play knight e6, I'm gambiting my knight for no reason. That doesn't seem like something I would just throw away. Um, on the other hand, if he doesn't do something about the promotion threat, uh, it just promotes. Which is all to suggest that the pawn's probably back on e5, but all this is suggesting, like, somehow I gave away a tempo. Just, like, entire move is completely missing from the record. At least from my record which would suggest I just hit the clock without moving anything, which doesn't seem right either. Um, let's see, and this other variation might... How do I reconstruct this? Rook d1, rook d2 takes... No, 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 this is not right, because I did end up giving my queen for two pieces. Uh d2 check is not good here. He needs uh, queen d5 in first. Um, maybe queen e4. Hey, welcome. Yeah, so something is amiss about my game score. Um, I don't think this pawn had a serious... Uh, promotion threat. Um, <sighs> dot dot dot. So, yeah, e7 never appeared here. If we got into this position, I probably would have played e7, so this can't be the position either. Uh, takes 
A4, let's see. Maybe I lost my E pawn. But then why, why, why would I keep playing after having lost the E pawn? That doesn't make sense either. He must have had some way to get his queen to d5, so something earlier in my game record might be wrong. Uh, this, this, might be four, knight c5, rook d8, takes b7. Did I do that straight away? Does it matter? Um... I bet Eric's game score is more complete than mine. Because uh, I was in time trouble. <laughs> he was in time pressure too, but... Um, could it be that this rook was on e6 the entire time and not on f5? Like, It's got to be something crazy. No, I vividly remember this happening. Um, he could have temporized here, but queen e6 is just ridiculous. Like, there's no reason to walk into this knight fork. Um, did I do something before? T no, there's no reason to do anything before taking this. <laughs> he might have done something before knight there. Like, but then this rook is hanging for no reason. Queen takes, rook takes, takes. Oh, here we go. This. This must have been it. All right. Um, you know, someday they'll invent uh, some technology that can repair your game scores. Actually, the algorithm for uh, generating a game score can't be so complicated. Because um, there's only a finite number of possible chess moves. So there we are. There's the queen d5. Uh, at which point I realize, oh shit, uh, I have to do this. Uh, or I'm getting mated. So that makes sense. Um so he takes on d2, I take c7, he plays a4. So already, like, this is not really great for me. Uh, a3, and I have knight e6 written down still. Um, uh, so something's still not right. Um, it still feels like this is probably what happened. <laughs> so, if e6 didn't get played, what the heck did I play here? Did I play f5 or something? f5 just drops the e-pawn. Is it h4? It was probably h4. I'm probably just that much of a dope here. I thought, like, h4 would somehow give my king luft or some way to escape this nonsense. Um, that's probably what transpired. So anyway, then we get the rook d1 and the rook d2, and it's really this king retreat. If I remember Stockfish after the game uh, commenting... It's really the king retreat back to g1 that screwed me. Uh, so, yeah, it's at this point, like, I realize I can't chase the a-pawn anymore. Um, so we play knight e6. Um, plays queen d1 check. 
And I'm careful to avoid squares on this diagonal. Um, queen d2 check. Queen e1 check. So you can't hit this square right now, so I do play the g2. King f2, queen a8. Um, and yeah, any threat I might have had with this sort of thing is now um, stopped. So there's no nonsense. He knows my tricks. That hurts. Uh, so I'm like, okay, let's try to make something else happen here. Um, and at this point I concede. I'm like, okay, yeah, you win. <laughs> oh well. It was an exciting game, but oh my god. Wow. Um, so we got a post-mortem that. Um, so I was saying, if I remember right, I think last time I analyzed this game, and that was offline, but I did that analysis, um, I think it was one of these king moves that uh, ended up losing the game. Now king g1 is the best move and it's lost here. Um, uh, queen d5 is actually best here. And here, yeah, it was walking onto that with tempo that just threw this game. If I play this, um, I have the tempo I need to pull everything together. And this is just completely ridiculous that this is even possible, but uh, queen d5, king e2. I was not thinking in these terms during the game. Um, but yeah, the rook on d1 is loose, uh, so he doesn't have any tricks here. Any maneuver by the rook off of the file, and I have this fork. So had I found that... I could have drawn this game. <laughs> uh, had I found that playing against a national master in time trouble, yeah, I could have drawn. Totally. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so, that was the fish that got away, guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, that's... So, like, here, obviously I could just take on c7 instead of h4. Um, assuming this is even the game position, but if I take on c7, he's got this perpetual on the first two ranks. Um, so that's not best, though, if I remember right. Again, I've done this analysis with an engine before, so it's not fair to say I'm coming up with everything here. Um... But I think it was knight d6 that the engine recommended. Oh, okay, it actually does like rook takes. And this isn't a perpetual because of some bold... Bold nonsense that, like, I don't even know. Oh, wait. This is way simpler than I thought it was. I'm an idiot. Um... Yeah, you just play the king up to e3. Easy. You just put your king in the center of the board when your opponent's attacking with their entire army. And, like, that's the way to go. <laughs> and the reason this works is because, like, this is a double attack. See? You gotta know your tactics. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. That, this is very much... The fish that got away. Uh, that said, like, I'm sure if he had spent a little bit more time and played a little bit more accurately, we wouldn't have an engine finding this nonsense. And it's unrealistic to say that I could have found this in time pressure. Outside of time pressure, maybe. In time pressure on the evening of round three of this exhausting weekend event... I, it's just not happening. I'm sorry. And, like, if your expectation is that I'm going to find that stuff, like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. 
So it was around here that I was like trying to play for a win. Um, not sure what I was thinking. Well, the other thing is like I need to take that B pawn because if I don't, he's going to have two runaway passers on the queen side and I'm not good enough at king side attacks to pull off some miracle on the king side. So I really have to take here. I have to give back material. Um, and, you know, it's just a matter of, like, assuming king h7 was the move here, and that might be a faulty assumption, but I just have to find, no, no, this was the game position, sorry. Yeah, I have this correct. Um, yeah, I just have to find one more move. Uh, did I make leeches? I am a contributor. I like developed some of the code, but um, most of it is uh, developed by our Lord and Savior Tebow. Uh, or more formally, he's the founder of leeches, and he develops um, the version zero and the version one and the version two. He he's written a ton of code. And we've collaborated ideas um, as a team, more so than code, because like he's a coding wizard. Uh, so it's probably best to let him handle much of the dicey stuff. And he's like way experienced with functional programming in Scala and ended up writing his own extensions to the Scala library. Um, so... I'm not in Scala on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but I did contribute some things, like the, uh, uh, what's it, some of the, this game was drawn because you don't have uh, any way of checkmating your opponent. I did contribute a fair deal of that code in that uh, standard chess and in variants. Um, no, 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 this was back in 2011 that we had this game. So I'm cutting myself a little bit of a break saying that I didn't find these moves. Um, Bishop h3, I guess, is when I started to play a bit ambitiously here. But I think this ambition is necessary, too. Like, again, he's got two passers on the queen side. And unless I could come up with some other way to neutralize them, I just have to grab the material and run. Um, is there any other way that I can neutralize this thing or this one or preferably both, but who am I kidding? I don't think so. Um, okay. Knight C5 is a candidate move. We don't need to take the engine's evaluation too far, but, uh, Oh my goodness, what is going on in this position? So thankfully, this rook uh, blockades the knight, or yeah, blockades the queen from defending um, a knight potentially jumping into c uh, d3. So, jeez, I'm gonna mark this as unclear and say, you know. The engine preferred white here, and I don't understand it. And chances of me getting this same position again in any other tournament game are pretty low. So even though knight c5 did occur to me during the tournament, just through process of elimination, I mean, like, there's nothing else I can play to attack here. e6 just drops the pawn. He's completely shut down any advance that I might make on the king side, and he's advancing on the queen side, so like he's giving me basically one candidate move in every position. Or in this case, there were two candidates, and they're both good. But it's kind of nice being pushed around like that, um, with some assurance that there is only one good move in the position. So yeah, I don't think b4 here was um, the best use of a tempo. Um, Let's see. So...
so what else can I consider? Um, well, I'm sorry. No, I'm thinking B4 was a mistake on his part, and I played fairly accurately thereafter. And this nonsense I was saying about Queen A5 earlier doesn't really apply in this position because I don't have a mate threat. Um, so, Queen takes A5 and then what? What was I so afraid of here? Maybe it was knight d5. Maybe it was knight d3. I don't know. Why am I so confused? There was some imminent threat here that caused me to back off. I think this was it. Um, and what can I try here? So there's this, and then after this I saw... Uh, I don't remember. Could I have really just been freaked out in this position and just not calculated accurately? I calculated this, this, and then how much further in this line did I go? So white has some threats here. White doesn't have a mate threat, but white has some threats. So black takes g2. Can I knight f6? Is knight f6 a thing here? It looks ridiculous. Is rook takes f6 a thing? Cause like, I'm not sure if this is a thing. Oh, this seems very much to be a thing now. I don't have any control of the light squares, so knight f6 is no good. So what else can I try? Yeah, no, knight takes g2. This ends the variation. Um, I can't think of any way to continue this variation. Like, this seems the best attempt at continuing, uh, but it doesn't set up... It does set up a threat to take on f5, but black's already up material? No. He's up a knight. The knight's trapped. Um, but the knight's also defended, and I'd have to give up an exchange to take it. Stockfish, help me out here. Rook takes f4. So I was looking at knight takes f4, but rook takes f4. I'm winning a rook? And somehow losing the game? <laughs> What the heck, Stockfish? What are you doing? Go home, Stockfish, you're drunk. Oh yeah, White's just going to put his queen there. Naturally. Uh, okay, so this is scary. Uh, King e3, queen e2, queen f3 mate. Okay, yeah, I saw that during the game. Not. Um... But okay, so that means I can't really take on f4. So white's best is to grovel and cry and hope that his opponent messes up. Um, well, that's spiffy. Um, Alright, so this is all to say like knight d6 is not as forcing as I would like it to be. Perhaps there's other places I can move the knight. Wait, knight f6 is a thing? Really? Okay, we're promoting this variation. Black has to take. 
White takes. What the hell is going on in this position? This is amazing. I... I can't. What is this? I'm not Emery Tate. But if I were, maybe this position would appear in my game. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, so candidate moves are bishop a7 and king g8. Just to give you an idea of what's going on here. Uh, I don't know that I prefer one over the other. They're both special in their own special ways so taking makes some sense uh okay let's take it fine knight takes f4 sure rook takes c6 just why not knight h3 um i guess these both transpose don't they no not necessarily And both of them are equal? How is... What is this sorcery? So this avoids knight f4 check. So let's put that first. I don't understand. So takes... Bishop d4 renewing whatever threats are in the position are now renewed. c5... Trying to get the bishop to move off the diagonal. And now the game ends in a perpetual check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is how the game should have ended. <laughs> I guess. Uh. Well. So that's like... A a seven move, eight move variation. Um, so this is saying that had the game proceeded in this manner, knight f6 actually works, which is complete baloney, but okay. Whereas knight d6 and white gets pummeled. So... Let's delete the knight d6 subvariation. This is how the game ideally would have ended had I played queen takes pawn. Um, and had we ended up here. Now let's see what the engine thinks, because I probably missed something else fundamental to this. So queen a3 was one thing I was considering here. I was considering other moves, but this... My brain kind of melted down trying to look at everything. Apparently, the better, better move is rook takes c6. And I think I'm content with just leaving it there and saying, um, I mean, this did occur to me during the game, but I couldn't handle it. This was too much. So I preferred queen a3, and the engine doesn't have a preference. Wow. So I preferred queen a3. I looked at queen a5 during the game. Um, I looked at rook ed1 during the game. Uh, queen b1 was on my radar, but I didn't closely look at it. Um, I probably should have because it's just obviously better than my move. Um, So the disadvantage of queen b1 is that black gets to keep his queenside pawns, but holy crap, my activity is so good. Uh, like, I just don't know. This is a beautiful pawn structure. If I'd just been a little bit more optimistic about my chances, maybe I would have done this. I'm not sure I could have played this accurately, because, like, I don't have much experience with this ridiculous position. With stuff like this, but... 
uh, this would have been the way to go. Uh, rook there, bishop f2 looks sane. And even though black... I don't know what to say. I'm not even sure this version of Stockfish is evaluating this correctly. Because if white pushes the center pawns, his king side just gets blasted apart. And black's always threatening this. I really don't trust Stockfish's evaluation. And white also has the bishop h3 threat, so... Um, I'm curious why knight d3 is bad here. Rook takes c6. I was considering positions like this one. Not this one in particular, but in similar positions, yes. So we sack an exchange to win an exchange? Do I have that right? Knight c5, I saw that. In other similar positions. Oh! Oh, this is different than stuff I analyzed. And the point here is that white's just up a piece. Um, so knight d3 is no good. So, yeah, uh, we do actually need to prepare um, knight d3. This would be a good way to prepare it. This did occur to me during the game, but um, knight c5, I probably would have played had I gotten here. Um, apparently the engine now prefers bishop c5 and e6. And we'll just leave that position for the engine to speculate on. Um, yeah, this queen a3. I did feel shaky about this during the game. I'd spent so much time looking at queen a5, and I did not spend enough time looking at for other candidate moves, and I probably should have started. I'm usually pretty disciplined about looking for candidate moves. Uh, here, I just zoned into this queen a3, queen a5. Let me go find something that looks aggressive, and really the best move is just queen b1. And having some confidence that I don't have to immediately attack. So I have to acknowledge that like the tides are turning with this b4 move that I'm actually in the driver's seat now. And that's not a position that I'm accustomed to being in my own games. Usually I'm under really heavy fire and coming up with tactical miracles to survive. But here, once he's played b4, it's my turn. And I just didn't run with that at all. So, yeah, I'm going to blame that on it just being round three. Um, F4. I liked F4. Does the engine like it? Uh, kind of, sort of, maybe. It prefers other moves for sure. Uh, well, then F4 made it to the top move, and then it got bounced down, and... Knight d6 apparently is better. Um, yeah. So that's the other kernel of truth here is that, like, I briefly considered this, and I thought, like, you would just retreat the rook. And I didn't see a point to playing the knight forward because it can't go to f7. Wait. Is Stockfish seriously telling me, like, go take this knight that was on e4, put it on f uh, d6, and then put it back on e4? That's uh, the engine's recommendation. And then it's like, oh wait, this is drawing. And then it's saying, no, here's a really good idea. Ah, <sighs> Stockfish. Oh my goodness. Can you not stockfish? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, but it's giving it a positive evaluation. If it wanted a three-move repetition, it would not give that a positive evaluation. It would just say, like, this is equal. Uh, it's 
being ridiculous. So, yeah, the knight d6 doesn't achieve anything, so my f4 move was fine. Yeah, and the most frustrating part of that is that I've gone into the stockfish code and fixed that. Um, so the reason it's showing up this time is not because of what I fixed. It's probably because of one of the other regressions that made it into stockfish 11 that I think just got fixed in today's build. Um, so my theory is that if I were to rebuild Stockfish from the source code today, it wouldn't do that. Uh, I should test that out, but um, there were some problems with move ordering with um, where the principal variation changes so close to the root of the tree because uh, just evaluations waver too much at a low depth. This causes move ordering to uh, cause some moves that are really low or high up in the tree, that how, depending how you look at it, but that are close to the root. Um, those moves don't get re-evaluated properly. And so um, because there's not a re-evaluation, um, some moves that were once the best move end up getting a best evaluation that's lower than the actual value that they should have. Um, that's one search bug that's been fixed in recent weeks. There's been one other which just uh, had to do with 50 move rule um, and repetitions and mate threats. And we're not dealing with that here, but like those two probably have cost uh, the variant stockfish 50 to 100 points, um, and it's good that they're fixed. Uh, and it drove me mad because I'm like, I wrote all this variant code that looks like it's evaluating things reasonably and whatever. But um, yeah, no, I went in and fixed uh, for analysis purposes the threefold repetition stuff. So it's frustrating when things like it show up. Um, because I'm like, hey, didn't I fix that? I'm pretty sure I did, and there's a test for it. But anyway, uh, yeah, someday uh, Leela will just be better. And you'll just use that, and you'll be like, hey, I know what you mean. And I know what a threefold is. <laughs> uh, anyway, that'll be the day, right? So, okay, the other thing I'm curious about is D4. Is that really... Oh, wow. I was condemning this move. I was like, I'm just playing from emotion, and I didn't like my pawn on d3, and this felt like the right moment to push it, because otherwise I'm never going to get to push it. Turns out, this is the best move. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, knight c5 was one of my candidates here, right? Uh, no. No, there it is. Knight c5 was one of my candidates, so okay. Um, f4 was one of my candidates, and I said this looks dubious, and Stockfish agrees that that looks awful. Uh, b takes was one of my candidates, and it was okay. a4 was one of my candidates, and I rejected it, and Stockfish is saying good on you. No? Yeah, it prefers black here. Wow, so I'm like, I don't know, 4 for 5 or 3 for 4 or however. I'm, D4 was an awesome move here. I just played a really good game. That never happens. I mean, yeah, I got crushed in the end game, but I came up with some novel ideas this game. Um, is there anything more to look at? Yeah, so the A5 I liked. But a5 might not be well-timed here. Uh, Stockfish is okay with it. I would still castle. Castling can't be wrong here. Because, like, what am I going to do? Push a4 or b5 or something? Like, that's not happening. There's no hurry to push a5. 
Well, I guess the only hurry is that it forces me to play bishop b2 instead of d2. Or if I do play bishop d2, um, maybe this changes something else about how black develops. But um, yeah, queen e7 looks okay. I don't know that I would play that here. What does the book say? What? The book doesn't have this position. Is this really so novel? How does this position not exist in the database? I am so confused. Um, so... Did I seriously play a solid opening against uh, 2200? I guess f5 is just like that hard to play correctly. Um, that even when I'm playing stuff like a3 and b4, that like I'm not getting a worse position. Um, so I guess the moral of the story, never play f6. Also, never play f5. Um, yeah, now this is just a really wild game. Um, and I played pretty well. This is possibly one of the best games I've ever played. And it's a pity that it ended this way, but um, still really cool. So, um, yeah, thanks to everybody for uh, watching, commentating, or commenting. It's been good fun. Um, and as I dig up other game scores, I'm sure we'll look over them as well. Um, so I've created this study on Lee Chess. Um, other people can clone it, study it, whatever. Um, and, yeah, possibly we'll come up with other new discoveries here. Um, possibly I'll go back to playing the English more, because this actually went pretty well. But I guess the reason it went so well is because Black played the f5 variation and tried to punish um, in that way. Whereas in main lines, um, Black advances directly in the center and actually gets a pretty decent game, so maybe this isn't what I want to do after all. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Have a good night.